and every available cutter to the aid of the Paradise. That's fine, and thanks very much. I hope you get all right. <laughs> Suffering snakes, Lowry. Do you see what I'm seeing? Look, Britt, there's Father. I'll join him. Britt Reed. Goodbye, Gloria. I'll see you later. And thanks. <laughs> Reed, my boy, are you all right? Hello. Oh, oh gee. Oh, hello, sure, it is a sight for sore eyes to be seeing you. Nobody had any idea you were on that ship. Boy, is this a scoop for the settlers? Is this a scoop? We come down here to get eyewitness stuff and find you on board packing a whole story. I'll dictate it on the way to the office. Hold Miss Case and tell her to hold the presses for an extra. Okay, Chief. Oh, oh, Britt, how about a little exclusive story for myself while the kid's busy on the phone? All right, Cato, give him the story. Oh, but I. Uh... Hello? Yes, Lowry. What's that? Mr. Reed on the Paradise. Well, is he all right? Oh, I'm so glad. And he wants the press's help for an extra. All right, I'll have the men in the composing room stand by. Tell Mr. Reed how delighted we are that he's back and safe. Get that story in right away, Lowry, and tell him to rush it. Yes, sir. Hello, Casey. Hello. I can't tell you how glad we are to have you back. Oh, I'm certainly glad to be here. There are a number of things that need your attention, but I suppose you'd like to rest first. I'll straighten things out. Rest later. Well, well, Mr. Reed, it's quite a surprise to see you. We, we didn't expect you. We had no idea you were on the Paradise. How's Gunnigan? He'll be able to leave the hospital in a few weeks. That's fine. I'm glad to hear that. We need Gunnigan on this paper. Well, I believe you'll find that my services have been very satisfactory. The advertising has increased considerably. That's good, if it's the right kind of advertising. Uh, we're safe on that score. I had everything checked by Gunnigan. I, I consulted him daily. All right, Mr. Hopper. I'll talk with Gunnigan tonight at the hospital. I'll see you in the morning. Oh, very well, Mr. Reed. Uh, I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night. alive and back on the job. Harper has failed again. He insisted on sending Bordeen on a job he should have done himself. You know, Krogan, I never did trust that guy Harper. I always figured that if he ever slipped up on a European lottery racket, he'd give the syndicate the double cross. You're right, Tower. It's up to you to take care of Harper. I understand. And I know exactly where he'll be hiding out. In that old house he inherited from his sister. Take Ringo with you. He's the best trigger man in town. I leave everything to you. Take the private elevator... And don't miss on this job. Cato, we have two very important jobs to do tonight. I understand, Mr. Britt. We will call on Mr. Harper. Oh, yes. And we'll deliver to the district attorney's home Bordine's confession that he killed Sweeney and the money he collected for turning in Kirk. Keep your eye on the house. I may need you. Don't tell her. Don't. It was just an accident we got back to America. It wasn't my fault. You know the penalty for failure, Harper. I have my orders for the chief. I have you covered. Reach. The Green Hornet. Drop that gun. Drop that gun, I say. 
Get Harper. Not so fast, Harper. Get down from there. You saved my life on it. Those crooks were going to bump me off. For what reason? I found out too much about their rackets. Especially the lottery racket, which you've been handling for the syndicate. I had nothing to do with the lottery racket. This is a confession from Bordeen that he killed Pat Sweeney. And this is part of the reward money he collected for turning in Kirk. I know all about you, Harper. And I'm cutting in on that European lottery racket. And a lot more that your syndicate is handling. Oh. So that's it. All right, Hornet. What's your proposition? First, I want you to give me a complete list of all the rackets the syndicate is handling. Well, they have a tie-up with all the important rackets in the country. And the lottery racket alone brings in about a million a month. You've come pretty close to it. Now come clean, Harper. What's the name of the outfit, and who's the head? Oh, I... I can't tell you that. Yes, you can. And I'm going to make you. But don't shoot. I'll... I'll... I'll tell you. The name of the syndicate... <laughs> What happened to the other rat? I got his gun, but he escaped. Both these men were killed? Harper was killed by that shot from the window. I used my gas gun on the other. Keep watch outside. The police, they must have heard the shooting. Come on, Cato. We're going to the DA's office. We got part of what we came for. The police will do the rest. Morning, boss. What do you think about Harper's story? That's all right. Sit down. Who do the police think killed Harper? Well, they figured that the Hornet, by bumping off Harper, was getting even with the Sutler for offering a reward for his capture. Oh, by the same token, now that I'm back on the job, I suppose the Hornet will be after me, huh? That's what the district attorney thinks, and so does the police. By the way, what was your candid opinion of Harper? Boss, I always thought that Harper had some tie up with the racketeers. I'm afraid you were right. I want you to call on a friend of his, a Mr. J.E. Lynch. Lynch? I know him. He's a lawyer. He called here several times to see Mr. Harper. Tell him you want all the dope on the European lottery. Also, tell him that Harper was very careless about leaving his memorandum book around where it could be found. Also, I'm on my way. Case, is Axford there? No, Mr. Reed. When he comes in, tell him I want to see him. Yes? What? He might be bluffing. Give him a cross-exam and find out how much he really knows. Lynch says that Lowry, a Sentinel reporter, is in his office... Demanding all the dope on the European lotteries. That's bad. He says that Britt Reed found a memorandum book containing a lot of information in the desk Harper was using at the Sentinel. That means that Britt Reed will start an investigation. And when that news out starts to investigate, he never stops. I'll stop him. Now. I'll close all our lottery offices today. But that'll cut off a lot of revenue. It's the only way we can stop Reed's investigation. Yes? All right, admit that you were. And tell him that as Harper's attorney, you're closing all the European lottery offices today. Yes. I'd give a hundred grand to know just how much information was in that memo book concerning our enterprises. It might be worth a lot more than that. Holy crow, have I got to beat. I was over to see my friend, the district attorney, and what do you think happened? He made you his deputy. Yes, he did. No, no. But he told me that it is home. Hold your time for that. Sit down. I want some information. Yes. Do you know anything about the Colton Ammunition Company? Do I know? Didn't I lose me three months' salary buying a bunch of their worthless stock? Well, you remember, Mr. Reed. They got a large order for shells from Europe. Oh, and then they floated a stock issue for money to expand their plant. Yes, and then a lot of serious accidents happened, and part of the building was destroyed. And the company went broke. And a lot of poor devils like me lost their shirts. Did Harper ever mention the Colton plant? Well, not in my hearing. But we did carry several half-column want ads for mechanics and machinists for the company that bought Colton's out. Oh, 
And that might explain the note in this memo book that Harper was so careless to leave behind. And what does the note say? It says, word Colton want ads in manner to attract kind of men we can handle. By all the saints. Didn't I tell you, Casey, that Harper was tied up with the crooks? Michael, get your car. You and I are going out to the Colton plant to investigate the new setup. Sure, it's parked right across the street and rare to go. I'm here to see Mr. Foley, your superintendent. Have you an appointment? Tell him Brick Reed of the Sentinel is here to look over the plant. Call Foley on the phone. Is this the main entrance? This is the only entrance. And no one is allowed to enter but employees. All right. This way. But, Foley, I tell you, we can't allow this Reed to go snooping around the plant asking questions. He knows every ex-convict in the city. He'll recognize some of the workmen. Do you think he'll recognize you? Sure he will. And keep out of sight. I certainly will. Hello? This is Foley. Connect me with Krogan. Yes? What? Rip Reed. Yeah. Reed and his bodyguard Axe, but they're here to look over the plan. I'll let them through the gate. They're waiting in the guard's office. Well, don't let them go beyond your office. Tell them you have strict orders not to admit anyone to the plant but employees. This is my chance to dispose of Reed. It certainly is. Reed's attempt to investigate our Colton plant is further proof that Harper's book furnished him with a complete list of our enterprises. I'll stop Reed's investigation if it's the last thing I do. All right. Now, I tell you, sir. Michael. Foley, if you don't let us go through your plant, I'm turning the whole thing over to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I've got my orders, and I'm going to enforce them. Who gives you your orders? The president of the company, Mr. Colton. Colton's hold out. He's still president. And besides, you're wasting a lot of my time. If you don't want to waste more time in the hospital, keep a silver tongue in your head. Michael. We lay for him at Dead Man's Curve. Well, just as sure as you're alive, the new setup now controlling the Colton plant is a bunch of saboteurs. I agree with you there. If I plug him here, their car might go over that cliff. Keep your motor running. Here they come. The police, get going and step on it. Uh, those murdering devils, I'd like to... You know, we're lucky to be alive, Michael. Those fellows would have finished us off if the police car hadn't come along chasing those speeders. Sure, I wish I had me automatic. Them crooks is likely to come after us again. You're right. Pull out and step on it. We can beat them back to town. And with half the workmen in our plant ex-convicts, and our storage vaults packed with bombshells for a foreign government, an FBI investigation wouldn't be any too healthy for us, would it? I'll say it wouldn't. All right, now listen. By this time tomorrow, the Colton plant will be just a big hole in the ground. What do you mean? For two months, I've been selling the Colton plant outright to Mr. Grinson, agent for the foreign government we've been making big shells for. You mean that Grinson's going to take over the Colton plant? He thinks he is. Lynch, our attorney, has been handling the deal. He's already been paid 400 grand in cash. Tonight, Grinson makes his final pay. 100 grand. At your house, Foley. Well, why my house? It's the most convenient place from which the foreign agent can mysteriously disappear. Tower will take care of that after Lynch receives the final payment. I'll see to that part of it. Then our pilot, Tonjis, will bomb the Colton plant from the air. After I remove the guards, of course. Okay, Krogan. Well, why destroy the plant? With this rigid investigation going on... Manufacturing large shells for a foreign government is too risky an enterprise even for our syndicate. Tonight, Cato, the Green Hornet is going to call on Mr. Foley, superintendent of the Colton ammunition plant. We will go to the Colton plant? No. We're going to Foley's home. It's ten miles out on the highway, north of the Red River drawbridge. 
night, the Green Hornet strikes again. The amount is correct, Mr. Grinson. A hundred one thousand dollar bills. You have my receipt and bill of sale ready for me, Mr. Lynch? Here they are, sir, in perfect order. They're correct. And now, gentlemen, the coat and ammunition plant belongs to my government. And operations will be carried on as at present? No. There'll be a drastic change in the personnel. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Good evening sir. Mr. Grinston. There's someone leaving. Shall I follow them? No. Wait here. Now I'll phone Krogan the good news. That'll be his signal to destroy the Colton plant. Now. Oh, you better use the phone in the hall. I'm expecting a long distance. A hundred grand. The final payment of a half a million on the Colton plant. The syndicate certainly cleaned up big on that deal. Yeah, considering the very low price we paid Colton for it. And after we put the plant on the skids. Keep your hands in the clear. The Green Hornet. Surprised to see me, eh? I'll take over that hundred grand, and you crooks are going to answer some important questions. Get over. this car bulletproof. It sure is. Pull up as close as you can. I've got to give that crook a shot of gas. Uh... 